Hi guys and welcome back. Uh, continuing the saga of the uh, Warbirds Replicas Tempest build. <clears throat> I'm just going to have a look at the parts that were left drying overnight. So let's just spin the camera around. <clears throat> so we've got our fuselage. I've taken all the clamps off it. Um, nicely dried. Everything stuck in place as you would hope. That's good. And then moving across to the wing panels. <clears throat> yeah, both of those, they look good, which is great. So the aim of today is to continue work on the fuselage and um, put the rear turtle deck, I suppose you'd call it, up a sheeting in place. Stick that in place and maybe make the uh, battery hatch, access hatch as well. And the, and the, and the curved surface that goes over the uh, front of the fuselage, top of the fuselage, we'll do that. And I'll get that pinned on and glued on and whilst that's drying I'll turn my attention back to the wings because there's a lot of sanding needed there of the leading edge and the trailing edge. So that's the plan for today. So let's get over to the workbench and crack on. <clears throat> on the fuselage uh, these are the side pieces that need to go on there and to be curved round the the former wheel, which they they're a pretty good um, fit and it bends quite easily. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the outside just to make it easier to bend. But talking of wetting, the front part of the fuselage here decking requires the balsa sheet here which you get in the kit to curve round in effect this former and as you can appreciate that's going to be quite a job to do that so we're going to need to wet that um, balsa to do that and to wet it and to put it round a former. I found a suitable cardboard tube which uh, I think some covering film came in and that is slightly tighter radius than the former you can see there which is good because once I released it that's going to spring out a bit and the thing with the wetting of the balsa is it only needs to be done on the outside of the curve so we'll, um, we'll wet it and then bend it round so I'm going to do that first of all and I can let that form a shape because I don't need that for an hour or two anyway so uh, we can crack on with that so the first thing I'm going to do is just get these side pieces and soak, well not soak, but slightly dampen the outside of these. So I'll just, uh, I'll just make sure that I've got opposite sides and they're going to be the outside. So it's just a quick application of a bit of moisture. to those. It's just going to help it and when, when it dries or as it dries it's not going to try and spring out of place so much. I'll also wet the outside of this sheet of balsa and let that soak in. And of course wetting the outside means that the fibres will expand and help form that curve. <clears throat> Just help that a bit and you can already feel it going. Which is great, which is good news. So I'm going to give that a little bit more, put it to one side, let that soak in and that'll be good to go. And likewise these side pieces here, they're now 
it's a lot easier for those to curve around the formers. Like I say, it's, abs it's not absolutely necessary to do that. Um, in fact, I should have done down the back end because obviously the formers curve down here as well. It's not absolutely necessary, but it, I think it certainly helps. I bought a load of these atomizer bottles off Amazon some time back because they're good for the um, accelerator for the super glue and because uh, I find that the the bottles the tops soon pack up on the accelerator so having some of these is handy uh, to fill them up from a refill pack which obviously is cheaper than buying another full um, accelerator bottle. I'm just curving this by hand. You can see it's already taking a shape there. And do the same with this one. Gradually bend it round to a slight curve just to take that tension out. Like that in there is. You can feel the resistance actually in the balsa when you're doing this. It's. Um, Quite surprising. This now is very, very flexible, this end here and right the way down to here. But as I come down to this end, obviously the grain has changed slightly and it's a lot more difficult to bend this piece here. But it's going. It's gradually going. Patience is the thing here. Be patient with it. Don't force it. And that, you know, is, a, is now a very, very easy fit onto those formers, which is brilliant, which is what I wanted. Not having to fight it, not having to put loads of tape over it. Yeah, this sheet here, this skin here is a lot easier. So it just shows you, they may look the same and cut from the same sheet, but obviously one edge of the sheet has got a different, a closer grain, I would guess, than the other, and therefore is a bit more resistance, a resistant. Now that should do fine for that. In the meantime, let's look, look at this pulsar here. Yeah, look at that, that's bending beautifully now. And you can see now that I can bend that over those formers on the fuselage there very, very easily. There. Obviously it's got to be cut because you'll have the, the join on the top of the, um, where the spline goes through here there'll be a join in this sheet because that's the sheet you're given. It's too long, we just need to cut it down to size and then the other bit we'll use half and half as it were. Well, I'm guessing uh, because we've got deck sheeting and deck sheeting mentioned. There's another piece as well somewhere in the 
offcuts which we will again use. Somewhere here. Oh yeah, the offcuts in the box, so uh, I'll do that with that one as well. So, okay. So whilst I'm waffling, let's just get that onto my tube. I've got some elastic bands to hold it roughly in place. That's held roughly in place. And then what I like to do is get some of my masking tape here, bearing in mind it's not going to stick to the, to the wet balsa, but it will hold it in place. So that's it held in place and we'll let that dry now and that's going to be more or less formed correctly for what we want. I'll get the other bits of um, bolster out of the box and put them on the tube there as well. So let's dry. Okay so going back and turning my attention to the decking here or the side decking I'm going to mark on the front former where it's got to come to so I'm not going to put glue all over the former I'm going to put it to the right place okay <clears throat> clean up my some Gorilla Glue out. My little spatula. Along the formers, and not forgetting the edge where that sheet will join the fuselage. Now obviously we're going to stick the 
bolster sheeting up to half of the double former there because the other half is for the um, the hatch so just be aware of that you need something for the sheeting to sit on bit good okay the first sheet now because we've got ply formers it may be a bit difficult to pin into them but I will start with pinning the bottom edge of this side sheeting down I want to make sure that's in correctly first of all And then I'll worry about how I fix the sheeting to the formers. Obviously I can use clamps, but what I want to do is I just want to get this balsa side sheeting more or less spot on with the fuselage sides. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but obviously if it's not, you've got to do more sanding or filling. And the uh, least amount of work that we have to do, the better in my book. Now something you may find is that if you religiously have pinned it in and so they, the surfaces meet there, as soon as you uh, curve the top end to go to the form as the whole thing bellies out. So what I've done here is I've taken the pins out of this bottom section here, pinned it into the formers at the top to get my uh, position right there, and then I can see what the problem is, that the sheeting, if you can see there, is overlapping the joint. So if I try and straighten that, it pushes it out. So what I've got to do now is I'm going to cut that like a little triangle from there, a fillet from there to there, and that will allow that sheeting to sit in place. Because of the, the nature of the curves that we're imposing on the balsa, I'm just going to Cut that sliver out of there and now hopefully that will go in place which now you can see it does which is absolutely fine so I can pin that in place there now There we 
go, that's better. Again, if you find that the the um, the pins are not holding the uh, balsa in place, you can tape strap that over, or doing what we did yesterday, using the super glue technique of permanently pinning with super glue, which is what I'm going to do here now. It's now the sides have been cut in here so they don't bulge out here and here. Um, I've pinned it but I've also used uh, super glue that were permanent pinning at the top edges where these really curve around on the top of the former there and I've clamped the former in place there because that was slightly bulging out from the straight sides. It's going to have a thick balsa capping put on here so I'm not overly concerned because that's going to be sanded straight and when I put the capping in place that's slightly bulged out there I'll straighten it up with and hold it in place with pins. So that's that's good to go. I'll let that dry now to one side. So the next thing I need to put the other bit of sheeting on here to bend it. Right, having just uh, searched through the bits box, can't find the other bits of deck sheeting. If you look at the parts list here, it says here, there's the deck sheeting that I've just curved. And then the there are two sheets of the, um, the trailing edge lower and the Aerolon lower sheeting and the offcut from that there should be the extra deck sheeting. However, in forming, the, in cutting the, this is the sheet that the Aerolon came out, the lower sheeting, trailing edge sorry, and Aerolon came out, the offcut that should be the offcut shown in the picture there has actually been taken up with this which is wing fair or the fuselage wing fairing piece. So that strip of balsa that we should be using should be using for the uh, cowl or curved sheeting from fuselage sheeting isn't there. Now whether that causes a problem when I do the build I don't know we'll see later. Right, a busy day in the workshop. Um, I've come back to the video sometime later from the last one. I've progressed but there's certain things that have held me up. So anyway, the first thing that I've done is I've uh, stuck the, the spline, quarter inch spline bolster into there and positioned it on the front and put the two uh, F4A and F2B uh, against their respective formers but I've put a bit of greaseproof paper in between them so that I don't glue them inadvertently to the formers. I've temporarily clipped F2 in place <coughs> so that I can then make the removable hatch which is that there. Okay, but then of course I turn my attention to the the curve.
curved balsa that I explained in an earlier video, earlier today, but I came across a problem. There wasn't enough balsa in the kit because of the way that some of the balsa has been cut for other things. So we're left with a situation where you will get one side of this section out of the balsa that's in the kit, but not the other side, unfortunately. So you'll probably have to go out and get yourself a um, 332nd or 2.4 millimeter uh, soft balsa. And the measurements you're after for each section, and I'll, I'll put them up on the forum, it's a wedge shaped because it's a tapered fuselage, 70 mil at the front, 80 mil at the back, and that's 245 millimeters long. And what that will do is it will fit in there quite nicely curve over onto the middle of the spline and obviously the corresponding other one will go the other side you have a join along the top and then you can cut down between the two or you can cut them in half and stick that onto there first of all take the hatch off and stick its own one onto it there it's entirely up to you I'm going to glue mine in place like that and then I'll cut down through carefully through um, to get my nice joint and I'll use my razor saw when I do that and I'll be cutting down in effect like that as I go through. So that was the first problem encountered and overcome, nearly overcome because I'm going to have to use my own bolster for that, not a problem. I then glued the rear top deck in place, straightening out the fuselage size as I did so. But the biggest problem has been the wing. So let's just move over to the other workbench and I'll try and explain what the problem has been. Okay, let's just move the camera around a bit. <coughs> We've got this lovely, let's get the unshaped one, lovely shaped wing, elliptical wing. The problem is with that depth of laminated leading edge there and the profile of the wing, there's absolutely no way that you can continue the profile through to that edge and get a sensible profile. You end up with like a razor blade uh, at this point here because you're squeezing it out to get to the edge like of that leading edge there. So what I've done on the one that I'd already carved out and more or less sanded to shape when I countered that problem, I've cut the, back, the front edge of the leading edge back a bit. I've maintained the profile more or less. I've actually come in a bit more here and less on the outside. So I've still got the curve, but by bringing that in, it means that I've got a deeper section of wood here that I can round. So I've now got more of a rounded section. If you think of it, it's a Clark Y. So that's what the it looks out of the root. And that's what it's looking like at the tip. There's the section. And now in the middle there, okay, it's not perfect, but if I run a ruler over that, there you'll see I've got a curve there. Before, that was, a, that was a flat line, a straight line to the front edge of the leading edge. Now it's entirely up to you whether you just stick with that and do that or do what I did, which is <coughs> scribe a line about, come about this point here, it's about five millimeters back from the front edge, scribe it through and come out and then plane that edge down then you'll stand a much better chance of getting a sensible profile. That's point one. And of course that's held me up a lot, a lot of toing and froing, deliberating over what to do. And I think that's the simplest solution. Um, now the next thing is the wing tip. There's washout in this wing. The wing has been designed for washout. And if you just plonk your laminated trailing edge and obviously this is the aerolon in place and keep it flat underneath what you'll end up with is there's the ruler showing the 
wash out like that, but if you just have it straight, you'll end up with a flat edge, bottom edge, on the underside of the airlock. So you have to plane that bit away. Even if it means, as mine, there, goes into that ply strengthening there. But by chamfering it like that, you can see, hopefully anyway, there's the, there's the ply, try and get it into the camera here. There's the dark line, there's the ply. And you see that disappears as I go to the edge because I've sanded the way. I still need to sand the top down, but that's basically what I've done. So I've maintained the washout in the wing. I think that's quite an important thing to do. <clears throat> still work to do on the wing to sand it, um, on the trailing edge anyway, in particular, the underside needs to be sanded because it's not a flat surface there, it curves. And at the moment, you'll see that, you can see the gap there, because I need to sand this down here to give it a bit of a curve, which is fine because at the moment I've got a hugely thick training edge, which obviously, whilst we may want a square training edge, we don't want um, a brick wall of a training edge. So, like I say, that slowed me down quite a bit today. I'll just swing the camera back round here. Let's do face to camera. Rather than getting my other camera. So yeah, that's slowed me down quite a bit. Trying to fathom out the, uh, the problem and what to do about it, or them, I should say. But once again, that's the point of Eric and myself uh, Eric, bless him, he's gone for injections in his eyes this afternoon. Yuck! Um, so he's slowed down his build. But that's the idea behind us going ahead and getting on with them because we'll encounter these problems. Now, Richard's away, as we know, for two weeks. If you want to hang fire and wait for Richard to come back and wait for um, his uh, take on it, by all means do so. It's not a problem. So. If that's the case, then don't get on with the wings. Leave the wings until Richard comes back. You can get on with the fuse and get all that done with a provisor that you will have to buy some 2.4 millimeter balsa. Um, but hey, you've probably got some in your stash. If you haven't, why haven't you? You're a builder of planes. You should have a stash of balsa um, for these sort of emergencies. So if you haven't, go out and put some stocks in for balsa, so 16th or 1.5 millimeter, 332nd, 2.4 millimeter, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, that's, get those in stock, they always come in handy. So, enough waffle. I'm not gonna do my face to camera closing it, I'm gonna do it on this one. So, hope you've enjoyed this video. Been a bit of a, um, not as much progress as I wanted, and now I've got a bit of a delay because I'm out doing mower maintenance tomorrow. Um, Friday I might be able to get on back on the build but we'll see how it goes but anyway if you've liked it please subscribe if you haven't done already if you do like the video thumbs up down below any comments down below and I'll get back to you but anyway guys thanks for watching see you in the next one